All right, can you turn to two places in your Bibles, please? This is where we're going to start the message today. Acts chapter 2 and John chapter 7. Acts chapter 2 and John chapter 7. And while you're turning there, I'd just like to take a moment to greet our online audience. Everybody, especially Andrew. Hello, Andrew. But everybody, oh, I'm glad you're here with us. And we're going to be speaking to you today because God has a word for you. So just because you haven't been in this anointed atmosphere of worship today doesn't mean that you're not going to get anything today. And it doesn't mean that you can't come next week. So say, sit with that as we teach you from the Word of God today. We are in the series called Rivers of Living Water. So if you're taking notes, and I pray that you are, take notes today. This is a note-taking day. So if you have to open up your notes app on your phone, if you have to steal some paper from somewhere, just anything that you can write on, you're going to want to take these notes. Write in the margins of your Bible when we turn to these scriptures because there's going to be a lot of them. This is a teaching Sunday. Don't let that scare you, but this is a teaching Sunday, and you're going to want to hear what the Lord has to teach us today. So let's jump right in in John chapter 7, verse 39. Are you in John already? Matthew, Mark, Luke, there it is. Oh, someone's been through OSL level 1. Praise the Lord. So John 7, starting in verse 37 and going to 39, it says, On that last day... That great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. All right. You will often hear me say, I think we read the Bible way too fast. And I think this is one of those cases. Because I want you to imagine this situation. Everyone's been called together for the feast, and it's the last day, the great day of the feast. So it's like, this is like the party party, all right? Everybody's there. Now what happens? On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood, and what? Put the scripture back so the people have it. I'm not sure they're seeing it in their own Bibles because I don't hear them talking. Jesus stood, and what? cried out there it is now that it's on the screen there you are all right check it out jesus stands up gets in view of everybody and cries out that sounds like this there's a volume raised isn't there he's trying to get your attention and i think he's trying to get our attention today as well look what he says when he's crying out is this gonna mess up baby is he okay he loves to preach it okay <laughs> praise the lord We're sensitive. Let the little children, don't hinder them. All right. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Because what do thirsty people want? A drink, right? Give me something to drink. It could be juice probably. I don't think they're picky. Give me something, right? If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, Out of his heart, whose heart? The believer's heart who believes in Jesus. Aha. See, interesting, right? He who believes in me out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I mean, Jesus is commanding the attention of everyone in that room, right? There's no one trying to go to sleep at this moment. No, They're hearing Jesus, isn't that right? And it says, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, out of him will flow rivers of living water, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit. Out of him will flow rivers of living water, he spoke concerning the Spirit. What's he talking about here? I told you like three or four times. The Spirit. He's talking about the Spirit. Out of him will flow rivers of living water. Out of him will flow what? The Spirit. The Spirit is going to come out of your mouth, rivers of living water. See, we're talking about being in this flow of the Holy Spirit. Out of his mouth will flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit is going to come out of you. It's going to be obvious whose you are and what power you're operating in. Amen. Look at John 4, 10 through 14. While you're turning there, let me just tell you that Jesus said, if you're thirsty, you come to me, and I'll give you something to drink. I'll give you the liquid refreshment. Isn't that right? 
And then, because you've been liquidly refreshed, you're going to now be a dispensary to other people. Out of your mouth will flow rivers of living water. See, it's one of those multiplication things. I don't know how much Jesus initially deposits quantitatively, but there's enough to get rivers out of you. Amen? Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is never diminished. Isn't that right? Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit is never diminished? Yes. Amen. My friend, by the way, Rodney and I were talking. Rodney, if you're watching, what's up? We were talking. He's not watching. He's in Corona ministering uh, back in the tech booth. God bless him. We were talking about how sometimes people don't feel like they can talk. And so, it, like in church or, or back to the preacher, talk to me. You can talk to me. Please talk to me. It's helpful for me. It'll, it'll not be as long if you talk to me because I'll know that you're getting it and I can just move on to the next point. Oh, you're like, yeah, we're going to talk big time now. All right. <laughs> you promise? <laughs> Listen, I just want to make sure that we're all getting it together. John 4.10 says, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water from that well that they were at will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So this water that Jesus is trying to give to us will become in you a fountain of living water springing up. Springing up. What happens when it springs up? It's not just just staying there. Yeah, it's getting out. It's getting all over stuff, right? And now there's mist. And now, oh, what's happening over here? Anyone go to the Bellagio ever? Not the good Christian. No, I'm just kidding. Everyone go, I, look, I've been down a thing, looking at the Bellagio, looking at the, the Mirage fountains and, and the things that are going on over there. I love that stuff. Have you ever been to Disneyland, World of Color? Have you seen that? Oh, my goodness gracious. That's glorious, isn't it? Oh, I love it. There's lasers. There's lights. There's water everywhere. All these fountains and colors. It's gorgeous. And, and have you been to Fantasmic? Anyone been to Fantasmic at Disneyland? Beautiful, right? And there's these walls of projections, like they make a screen, a projection screen out of water. And what happens if you're near it? You get wet. That's right. And, and man, it's a windy day today. We know about some wind today, and it may get on you if it's windy. Isn't that right? See, when things spring up, all of a sudden it's not contained to one place anymore. But now it's effectively moving in other people's lives. It's getting on someone else. Amen. Not just the dispensary. It's not, it's not just the things that are shooting up the water that are getting wet. Now, other things are getting wet too and being refreshed. Praise God. The water that I shall give him will become in him. Does it start out a fountain? Not according to this text. It will become. And we want to talk about how it becomes living water for yourself. That's the title of this message today. Living water for for yourself, a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Doesn't that sound good to you? That's what we want. Lord, bring it. Acts 1, eight. Acts 1, verse 8. It says, you shall receive power. Say power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Should you expect any power before the Holy Spirit comes on you? Nope. Nope. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And because of this power, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I like to think about it this way. And you shall be witnesses to me in Hesperia, in the high desert, in California, and wherever you go. That's how I like to think about it. Would you receive that today? You are meant, designed, purposed, and empowered to be witnesses because the Holy Spirit is with you, living in you. We are now one spirit with him. That's such good news. So let's talk about this power, shall we? Who wants to know about the power? Who's with me? Amen. Acts 2. Now that you've been holding your place in Acts 2 at the very beginning, 
It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. It's not like Pentecost Eve. You know how you're like, oh, it's Christmas time. It's, Christ- it's not Christmas until it's Christmas. Isn't that right? In my house, you don't get to open up the gifts until it's Christmas. We don't mess around with this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they didn't know when it was going to be. So I don't know if that's better or worse. You know, if you get antsy, you know, like, ah, Pentecost. But these 120 were praying earnestly, and they stayed with the word of Jesus. Stay together, be in prayer, don't leave until the promise is delivered. They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all, say all, filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues. You don't have to say that one. Thank you, though, Lucy. That was great. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Say that phrase, as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want this to be so clear to us today. And because we don't want anyone to get under condemnation, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen, we have a tendency to overthink this thing. The Holy Spirit is very capable. Amen? Amen. He will give you the utterance. You allow it to be spoken. Good to go. Amen. As the Spirit gave them utterance. The baptism of the Holy Spirit provides the power for us to pray in tongues. Let's look at some scripture on this. Again, this is a very teachery kind of Sunday, so just know that there's going to be a lot of scripture coming at you. This is why I want you to take some notes, because you're going to want to explain this to yourself to remember it, and then you're going to want to, be, to know it so well that you can explain it to somebody else. Because somebody explained it more accurately to me. And I'm so thankful because I was all twisted up in some bad doctrine from years of being taught elsewhere in places that they don't receive the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so we can come from backgrounds, can't we? That's like, oh, it may mess us up a little bit. We have to be trained according to the uncompromised word of God. Let it just say what it says. And, and you're going to be hearing me doing a lot of that unpacking today, right? Right. 1 Corinthians 14.2. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. Who are we speaking to when we speak in a tongue? Are we speaking to each other? Nope. This is talking about praying in tongues. When you speak to God, what's it called? Prayer. Right? <laughs> so I try not to give you really hard ones. Uh, I try not to trick you. Uh, but when you, when you speak to God, that's called prayer. That's a part of it. You speak to God. He says, ask, right? He says, talk to me. 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 13 now says, Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. For if I what in a tongue? Pray. Okay. My spirit what? Let's put that up. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians 14, 13 through 15. Let's just see that. I know I didn't have these prepared on the screen, but this is something that's going to be good for us to see. Especially in verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Yes? If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. What are we talking about? Prayer. That's right. We're talking to God. And a lot of times, it's like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. This is this. Right? What is the conclusion? I will pray with the Spirit. Say, I will pray with the Spirit. spirit. Say, I will also pray with the understanding. understanding. 1 Corinthians 14. This is verses 14 and 15. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 and 15. In fact, just put out 15, Jennifer. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. All right, so let's talk about this. If I'm praying to God, My focus is on who? God. Hopefully, right? You ever ever been in a conversation with someone and they're clearly not with you? 
It's like, hey, 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 hey. Dial it in right here, <laughs> right? Oh, that. Or someone's on their phone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. By the way, can I just disciple you for a minute here? If you're reading your Bibles in the morning on your phone, like do the do not disturb thing or something. Like make sure you remove every distraction possible because something will come and try to steal your attention. Isn't that right? Something will come. I praise God for my wife. She gets up early in the morning, earlier than she has to even, to make sure she gets her Bible reading done undistracted because when the kids wake up, forget it. Right? And so you may have to find a time, find a good place, no distractions, because, oh, isn't that the truth? Yeah, you know. That's why it resonates so much in, in this room, because you know that happens. If I'm praying to God, I'm, my attention is on God, and I'm saying, I'm saying whatever I'm saying to God. If I'm praying in English, then I understand what I'm saying. He obviously understands what I'm saying. He knows everything. If I'm talking to you, and I'm speaking in English, that's great. Now you understand what I'm saying because we both speak the English. Great. Now, if I'm praying in a tongue, you, you will probably not know what I'm saying. I don't even know what I'm saying if I'm praying in a tongue. You know, I'm, I'm right there with the Lord. He knows what I'm saying. He's giving the utterance. Isn't that right? And I'm just being willing to let it go. Who, who knows in here who has had this infilling of the Holy Spirit that you can turn it on and turn it off anytime you want? Isn't that right? Right? Turn it on, turn it off, just start speaking in tongues. Stop speaking in tongues, right? And in this way, praying in tongues. Both, actually. You can, we'll get into it. All right. So I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. So I can pray to God in English, and I can pray to God in this spiritual language, in tongues, whatever, right? Whatever you like to call it. I will also sing with the understanding, in the language I know, English, and I will sing with the Spirit. What's the difference between speaking and singing? Anyone want to take a guess? Just shout it out at me. Tone? Oh, that's good, yeah. Part of it is tone. Melody. Delivery, heart. Timing. See, if I'm talking to you, it's so short and broken up, and it's this and that, blah, blah, blah. But there's kind of a thing. And someone might, you know, want to auto-tune this and say, well, this one is that. And if they really down. They can probably go to the piano and say, that word was this, that word was that, right? Auto-tune, no one? Okay, Josh, no? no? Okay. Anyway, you can find out. But if I'm singing, it's clear that I'm singing to you. Why? Because there's tone and it sounds great. <laughs> you know that's right. Matthew, nothing? No? All right. Anyway, singing and speaking, there's a clear difference, right? But I can sing in English. I can sing in the Spirit. Same thing. Just, it's just adding some timing, some melody to it. Easy. Easy. And we can turn it on, turn it off anytime we want. The Spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Oh. There's a time to do it. There's a time to stop doing it. We'll, get, we'll continue moving through this message and you'll see. More. Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18 has some encouragement for us. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying always. What are we talking about? Praying. Praying always with what kind of prayer? All kinds of prayer. With all prayer. So every kind of prayer. And supplication in the Spirit. In the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. See, the way this is worded in the Greek text is with all prayer and supplication, praying at all times in the Spirit, and to that end be awake, alert, and watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. See, with all prayer and supplication. In the ESV, we'll look at some major translations and see, because scholars have taken this apart, and they've put it together so in a way that we can know in our language what it's saying. ESV says, praying at all times in the Spirit. NIV, anyone like NIV in here? The New International Version? All right. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Oh. The New Living Translation, anyone have an NLT? I got an NLT. Yeah, a couple of us. Pray in the Spirit at all times. And a GW, God's Word Translation, pray in the Spirit in every situation. See, it's not like... It's not saying this. It's saying this. 
God is saying, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Jude 20. In this little tiny book of Jude, there's a lot in there. It says, but you, beloved, it's talking to believers now, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, I can take you down a rabbit trail, and I won't. You're welcome. But just take it for what it says. Praying in the Holy Spirit. And if you want to link the two, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. It's perfectly appropriate. If you want to build yourself up, pray in the Holy Spirit. When you're communing with God that way, confidence comes. Assurance comes. Boldness comes. Isn't that right? So many times you you read in the epistles, pray for us for boldness, that we can speak boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is a difference between the gift of tongues and praying in tongues. There's a difference between the gift of tongues and praying in tongues. I'm going to show it to you. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Oh, that's good news. And, and we may need to just plant right there for a second. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. God is not trying to withhold from us. Did you know that? He's trying to give to us. Each one of us, each and every one of us. Say, even me. me. There you're right. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So when the the Spirit manifests in one of these gifts, it happens, and then it stops happening. It's for a time, and with obedience, then you'll, you'll deliver it, and then it'll be done. And then the next time will come up and you'll deliver and it'll be done. And there may be a time that we hear somebody even in this service speak out decently and in order. Probably in worship, you know, we've heard that a lot in worship. Someone, you know, there, there will be a hush and someone will speak out a word in tongues. No one understands it. And so it's like there would need to be, tra- uh, not translation, but uh, interpretation of that in that moment. And a judging of that word. Does that bear witness with the Spirit in us? You know? For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles by the same Spirit. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And another, interpretation of tongues. So do you see all these are given by the same Holy Spirit? You know this? Okay, so we're clear that far. So this 1 Corinthians 12 passage is talking about these nine different things that happen. Did you hear healings in there? Miracles? Tongues? Do we like healings? Do we like miracles? Do we like tongues? We should. We should. And we shouldn't be afraid of it. It's nothing scary. Nothing to be feared. We like prophecy, give it to us. Wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Oh, Lord, help us. This is power. This is power. So the gift of tongues is to benefit everyone, right, for the profit of all. And it needs to be interpreted. The gift of tongues is to benefit everyone, and it needs to be interpreted. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. We should be desiring spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification, that building up and exhortation, and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Say edifies himself. Who's that talking about? There you go, me. Me, 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 me. But he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues. What? What? The Apostle Paul is saying, I wish you all spoke with tongues. So is there any question that tongues are for us for today? Well, there's no, there's no dispute, right? We believe that Paul is saying, I want you all to speak with tongues. As if this is a good thing. And it is. All right. I wish you all spoke with tongues. But even more, that you prophesied. So he continues in this thing. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless, and indeed he interprets, that the church may receive edification. 
So a message in tongues combined with interpretation edifies others. Right? You build yourselves up praying in the Holy Spirit. That's how I build myself up. Now, when a message in tongues is given and, and interpreted, now we're all benefited and edified. Speaking in tongues without interpretation only edifies yourself. Okay? So Paul addresses both praying in tongues and the gift of tongues. Do you see it? And in 1 Corinthians, this is like a treasure trove of how to understand this. Uh, chapter 14, verse 14. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. It's like not bearing any fruit. I don't know what I'm even saying. What's the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. Well, clearly, if you don't understand what's going on, and you're meant to be speaking this out, someone's understanding. It's useful in some way, right? You may not know exactly how you're being built up, and that doesn't matter. The Lord knows. He speaks that language that he gave to you. Isn't that right? If I were to teach you Spanish, <laughs> God help you. If I were to teach you Spanish, I would at least know what you're saying in return. Or just some gibberish language, you know, some made-up mammo dog face with a banana patch, right? I, I would know at least what you're saying because I would have the lexicon, right? So you're saying it back to me. I gave it to you. God knows what you're saying in tongues. Isn't that good news? It's, it's useful. So, in, uh, so I will pray in the Spirit, also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen to your giving of thanks? So let's say I'm thanking God in tongues, <laughs> and Don doesn't know what I'm saying, right? How is he going to say amen to that? It's just going to be like, wah, 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 wah. Charlie Brown's teacher, right? Wah, 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 wah. He's got to know what it's saying, what it's meaning in, in order to, to agree with me. Say amen. Yeah, so be it. Yeah, God be praised. Hallelujah, whatever it is. Since he does not understand what you say. So the gift of tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 26 through 28. 26 through 28. How is it then, brethren? I love this scripture. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. All right. Man, that's a mouthful. There's a lot in this, right? Let's unpack it. So he's not saying, what's up? Why aren't there any psalms and things and tongues among you? He's saying, no, no, no. How is it? Whenever you come together, everyone's got something. And, and not everyone has a tongue. Not everyone has a teaching. Not everyone has a psalm. But we all together bring something. That's how it, that's how it looks. That's how it should look. And so when we come into this place, it should, it should be that our spiritual temperature is high and right. And, that, and so we're not like cool. And we're prepared with something. That God is, is showing us something. He's speaking something. And it's to build us all up. Isn't that right? That's exactly what he's saying in this 1 Corinthians 14, 26 passage. And then he gives this caution. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or three at the most. Remember, we want all, let all things be done decently and in order. Because there's a ditch on both sides of that road, right? There's some people who don't speak in tongues ever. That's not right. That's not letting all things be done. And there are some people that, that do other things, and it's not decently in order. They're like, just go crazy. No, don't go crazy. Do what the Lord said. Do what the Bible says. So there's a ditch on both sides. We don't want to follow in either ditch, do we? Just keep right on trucking in the middle. Let all things be done decently and in order. So let's talk about five benefits of praying in tongues. All right, number one. You edify yourself spiritually. You build yourself up spiritually. He who speaks in the tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 4. And remember that Jude 20 passage? But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So 1 Corinthians 14, 4 and Jude 20. For this, you, you build yourself up spiritually. Don't we need to be built up spiritually? Sometimes do you feel weak? 
Anyone? Or is it just me? Sometimes you just feel weak. You're like, Lord, I don't have it. He's like, don't I know it? He said, but I got you. Amen? And that's when he gave you this utterance. He said, you know what? Open your mouth. Pray this out. Pray this out. It's going to do you some good. It's going to give you some confidence in what you need to go tackle the day. Because I got power for you. Think about your house. Yeah, at the, we have ours at the street. Our water main. Anyone ever have to go out there in a crisis and try to find this water main? It's like, why didn't I buy that tool <laughs> to turn it off? Right? Because the sink or whatever is, is overflowing. Like the busted pipe, whatever it is. And so now you go there and hopefully with the tool, you, you put it down the thing, you crank it, and now the water's off to the whole house. Even though you have however many sinks in your house, however many showers, however many toilets, however many water dispensaries, right? You have all of that. Filling up your pool, your spa, whatever. Your sprinklers. The, the water goes everywhere. But it starts at this one water main. Just like this multitude of gifts. It starts from this one place. The Holy Spirit. Right there giving you the utterance for this. Oh, let it go. But if we stop it up, we're not going to be useful to anybody. I can turn that faucet on at the sink all day long. Nothing if the water mains off. Isn't that right? And we can control that. What happened to water over here? I turned the water main off. Turn it back on. <laughs> I need some water over here. Okay. And who knows that you shouldn't drink from the toilet? <laughs> yes? Okay, thank you. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> But you, there are some places that you need to drink from. See, what's going to edify you? Praying in tongues. Right? That's good for you. See, I wouldn't even recommend drinking from the sprinklers. Right? You get right down there. Bah, 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 bah. No. And they're spending on the, the ones you have. That would hurt. Ah, in my eye. Right? No, no. Drink from the water, from the fountain. Drink from the, the filtered, oh, I'm trying to think, because people, yeah, faucet. We have it come through the fridge, you know, we have to replace that filter every once in a while. It's expensive. But, yeah, you replace that thing, and now you drink from that. Isn't that right? This is how, this is how, because you need to drink. It's not just enough to take a shower. You need to drink water. Amen? Because you need it, and God knows that you need it. So the same way we're not going to drink from the toilet. We do need to drink something. Drink from that faucet. Amen. You must not avoid, we must not avoid this river for drinking and being refilled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot just avoid it. How many days do you think you can survive without water? Very few. Very few. And we are not built up spiritually as much as we should because we're not often praying in this way. Let us pray more. In the spirit, build ourselves up. Amen. Someone say amen to this. Amen. If you're seeing, the, if you're hearing the words of the Lord, it's good to say amen. So be it. Because we need to be bold and confident and equipped and empowered to make a difference in the lives of others. Number two, second benefit, is you pray perfect prayers. Who likes having the word perfect attached to anything about you? Me. Yes. Haircut. Not. Nah. <laughs> it's only one option, folks. <laughs> Hard to mess this up. You pray perfect prayers. Look at Romans eight twenty six. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I remember when the Lord kicked off my spiritual language as he gave me this utterance. I didn't even know what it was, and I felt silly, honestly. I felt a little silly. We're in Louisiana, in Baton Rouge, and it was a prayer time, and obviously all I know to do is pray in English, and so I'm praying in English for my pastor's wife who had asked for prayer for healing for her eyesight. It was very, very bad. And so I'm praying for this lady's eyesight, and all of a sudden, I'm sent, I am don't even know how to describe it so much, but it's like I know that there are, let's call them syllables, right, sounds, so to speak, whatever you want to call them, that I, I'm like, what, it doesn't mean anything to me, but I can, 
I could, I could speak them out. I know I could speak them out. But I, I, I knew them. And so we're in the car at the end of this huge service after this thing. And I'm talking to my pastor. And I said, hey, listen, I, there's this. This is going to sound weird. You know? And I said, well, I heard this. Like, like words, like those syllables, that, you know, whatever. And I said, what, what's that about? And he was so cool. This was like the best that I've ever heard it. He's like, oh, just when you're praying next time, just tell them to the Lord. Come on. I don't know if it's because he knows I get in my own head and I get worried about stuff. It's like, well, I better not say that or I might be wrong. Or, and do, am I alone in that? Do we all do that? <laughs> Many of us maybe are a little bit uncomfortable or nervous. It's like, I don't know if that's right. You know, I feel like I should go tell that person, you know, to, to be strong and of good courage. You're like, they look fine. Maybe they're not fine. You should go speak it out, right? And this thing, so I didn't know what it was. He said, just taking the pressure off. Hey, the next time you're praying, just tell them to God. Oh, that was the best. That was the best. And so I did, and that was the, the kickoff. Who, I was praying for somebody else, and I wasn't even praying for this to happen. But the Lord was giving it to me. I believe in that moment I was praying God's perfect will. And he knows what it was. Praise the Lord. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. 1 John. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. It's like if, if I go ask my dad, Dad, I like a Mountain Dew. If he heard me, he's going to get that Mountain Dew. That's what this scripture is saying, if, as if it was that easy, right, here on the earth. This is, it's that easy with a God. God knows he's hearing you. You'll have it, whatever he asks, according to his will. See that? According to his will. Whose will? God's will. And so when you're praying to God in a, in a language that you don't understand, you're praying the perfect will of God, he hears you, and he's going to give whatever you're praying for. And he knows the best thing for you to pray for right then. Good news, right? I know this is dense. This is a dense teaching. There's a lot of teaching in this. But this is exciting stuff. Don't be afraid to get excited because this is exciting. Number three, praying in the Spirit gives you wisdom. 1 Corinthians 14, 13. I'm telling you, this 1 Corinthians, like 12 to 14, the, the whole thing's going to help you. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue... Pray that he may interpret. Great. So you're not even stuck not knowing. You're not left. Not, you, you don't have to not know. You can ask God for the interpretation. Lord, what am I praying about right now? Oh, thank you, Lord. It does tell you. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. And look at verse 15. What's the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray also with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and also with the understanding. Pray and sing both in the spirit and with the understanding. So we'll say, pray in tongues and also in English. Is that, is that a good kind of translation for us? Pray in tongues, pray also in English. Sing in tongues, sing also in English. It's beautiful to the Lord. And it's his perfect will, and he gives you wisdom, and you edify yourself. This is good news. Number four, praying in the spirit strengthens you to resist temptation. Anyone excited that you're able to resist temptation? Yeah? Me too. God always will provide you a way of escape so that you can stand up under any, any temptation. Did you know that's true? There's no, there's no temptation that you're going through or you have ever gone through that's, that's common to you. This is a known quantity, and God knows how to deal with it. He says when you are tempted, he'll also provide a way of escape so you can stand up under it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He's wily. Verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. 6.11, we talked about that earlier. Number five, fifth benefit. Praying in the Spirit prepares you for ministry. Who knows? I'm telling you, I love this. I don't know where this came, when this came to me, but I'm, I'm committed to it. The reason God didn't kill you and take you right to heaven when you got saved 
is because you're not done here. You have work to do. And like that was your most perfect spot, right? When you get saved and, and he cleanses you from all your sin and everything, right? That's your, like you'll never be more perfect than at that time. All your sins washed away and baptized and the whole thing, right? Why not then? That's the, like seeming the best time for me to go. Because then I don't have to rack up any more sins while I'm here, right? Isn't that right? But he doesn't kill you right then and take you because you're the most perfect you'll ever be right then. No, no, no. You still have work to do. He's saying, I'm willing to continue to train you and teach you and build you up and empower you, give you my spirit, so you can be a help to other people. Prepares you for ministry. This is why we don't just die when we get saved. This right here. Anyone want to say thank you, Lord? <laughs> now that we've been saved for a while, we're still kicking? Thank you, Lord. Acts 2.4 says, They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. They were all filled and they all began to speak with other tongues. Do you see it here? Was there anyone who didn't speak with tongues? No, there was no one there. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. This was new to them. Do you realize that? This was like a whole new thing. They couldn't ask their pastor about what are these things I'm hearing in my head. Sometimes when you hear voices, you, what, you think, oh, I'm crazy. Right? They didn't have anyone to ask. It was just this whole thing. That the Spirit was moving among them, and what they do? They were in prayer and thanksgiving already, all together in one accord, in one place, and they just let it flow. That's the answer. Let it flow. As the Spirit gives you utterance, even if it's a language you don't know, especially if it's a language you don't know, just let it flow. And talk to Him about it. You're going to be praying His perfect will. All, all these benefits will be yours. Acts 10, 44 through 46. We are rounding the bend, church. Have hope. Don't worry. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. What? The Gentiles? Are you crazy? <laughs> right? It's not just for the Jews anymore. Now the Gentiles are entering into this thing, and we all as, gen as Gentiles have been grafted in to this living vine, right? Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. We've been grafted in. And it's like, listen, don't, don't get all cocky about that because he can graft you out. As, you know, as easily as he grafted you in, like if you, if you, if you want to get out, you could be out. Yeah. But that's free will, isn't it? Isn't that good that God doesn't force us to love him? That God doesn't force us to do anything. That's true love. Acts 19.6. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before we go on to that, I needed to read verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So what they were hearing was God was being praised as they were speaking out in these tongues. Languages that were not known to them. Hallelujah. And that's when the upper room happened. When the upper room happened, they were praying, all these 120 people praying with tongues. Oh, they're drunk. They're not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock. They were moved by the Spirit. And all these people are hearing them magnify and glorify God in their language. Interesting. It's very interesting. So it's not like it was even an unknown quantity what was happening. These tongues were producing something. It's like, it's this God. It's this God right here. Come follow him. Acts 19.6. Last one. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Isn't that good? and prophesied. So now they're getting built up and others are getting built up. Isn't that what we read? And what we learned earlier? See, tongues is not the power. The Holy Spirit is the power. We, sometimes we spirit-filled folks can get wrapped up in some stuff. Oh, as if it's tongues. It's not tongues. It's like, it's not flowers. I told you I was going to bring Jen flowers more, and I did it, finally. I've been trying to get to it, you know, and things come up. Anyway, so I bring her. It's not flowers. It's love. Isn't that right? That's just one way. 
And I show her, I'm, I'm thinking about you. I love you. I, I miss you. Here's some flowers. Tulips, her favorite. This is not about me. This is about the Holy Spirit. I'm just saying, we, let's not get hung up on the flowers. Let's not get hung up on the tongues. It's, this is one way. And it's a really good way. Did you like those flowers? That's what I'm saying. God likes those tongues, right? Speak it out. Speak it out. Speaking in tongues helps you release these other rivers that are meant to flow out of you. Did you know that? So it's kind of like a step one. When, when they were receiving the Holy Spirit for the first time, what's the first thing we see happen? Praying in tongues. Isn't that right? That's the first thing we see happen. So let's not be afraid of it. Let's embrace it and become empowered. Stand to your feet. Come on. I know this is, man, it's like, man, you're talking for 45 minutes teaching us all the scripture after scripture. We are a <laughs> discipling church, by the way, if you didn't know it. And I know that sometimes this stuff can be like, what, what, what? But you have seen it. Have you seen it from top to bottom? I mean, we have gone all through this thing. Is there any doubt in anyone's mind that speaking tongues is for you for today from the heart of God for a good purpose? I've convinced you all. I can see it in your faces. Why don't we do this? As the music plays and we dim the lights, would you just give me a couple more minutes? I know that you could go to another church that is shorter and, and is all, woo, and God is love and all that. Okay, it could be a party all the time. Sometimes we need to get taught these really deep things so we can accomplish the mission God has set us on. Isn't that right? And that's what we're doing today. And so let's not be hearers only, but let's be doers of the word. Amen? And if there's someone right now who here in this room, prayer team, you can even mobilize and come to the front. If there's someone who hasn't received that, you haven't heard these voices in your head, you haven't received these syllables or these sounds or whatever you might describe them as, and you're earnestly desiring spiritual gifts, well, now's your time. If you ask your father for bread, is he going to give you a stone? No. So he's not going to give you something that is weird or apart from what you're praying. He's not going to make you look like an idiot. I'm telling you the truth here. I think most of the time we don't do stuff in the spirit. We don't do stuff in the kingdom because we're afraid of looking like an idiot. He's, if you ask him for bread, he's not going to give you a stone. He's not going to give you a scorpion. He's not going to hurt you. And just allow it. So for any reason that you want prayer today, for yourself, for another person, to even come into the family of God for the first time, to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit, Oh, just say, Holy Spirit, overflow me. Inside, outside, in, out, and through. I want these rivers of life to be pouring out of me, springing up into eternal life for everybody that hears it. I encourage you to come right now. Let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for teaching us by your Spirit, reminding us of things that Jesus said, reminding us of the things that we know from your word, for empowering us, for being so clear that you've left nothing out. We can see you so clearly. Lord, I pray that there would be a boldness in this room right now and anyone watching online, that there would be a boldness from wherever we've received this teaching to be willing to reach out to you and say, yes, I want what you have for me and I'm not willing to stop short and just be a good little Christian boy, a good little Christian girl who comes to church and who serves and who's friendly. But Lord, I want to be empowered. Give me boldness to speak and to bring others into your family, into your kingdom, into your love, into this eternal life that you have prepared for us. We don't want to stop short. We want to accomplish everything that you've set before us, all these good plans all these good gifts, all these perfect gifts. We want your fullness. We receive your Holy Spirit today. And I encourage you, even as we're praying, it is very likely that the Lord will begin giving you that other utterance. Just speak it out under your breath. It doesn't have to be loud. It's not meant to be loud. God can hear you just fine in a whisper. 
just mutter it under your breath. Speak it out in a whisper. Allow him to flow through you and edify you. Lord, we thank you for caring so deeply about us individually and not just corporately. It's not about, well, oh, this and that, that when we're a big force and, and we go do that and we look like this. No, no, no. It's in this secret place with you that we tuck in and we commune with you and we talk and you build us up because you're giving us another perfect gift. Lord, we're not criticizing your gifts today. We're not avoiding your gifts today. We're not turning away. We're saying, we want your best gifts. This gift of speaking to you, this gift of, gift of tongues is for me, it's for now, it's from you. It's nothing to be afraid of or ashamed of. Lord, let me begin walking in this new power, in this new life that I may have never known before because you're good and you're bringing me to this new place. You're taking me higher. You're moving me from glory to glory to glory as by your spirit. I want it, Lord. I want it. Thank you, Father, for being so good. And before we all say amen together, I want to tell you this one thing. If you're praying right now because you've, you've come to church to be changed and not to just stay where you were when you came in, this is how we always operate around here. We've come to walk out differently, to walk out stronger, to walk out more impactful, for, to walk out more equipped, more of a blessing to other people. If you've come with that heart today and you've been praying even in this time, Lord, give me that utterance. And it hasn't happened in the 45 seconds that we've given it so far. Don't worry. You just keep praising the Lord. Ask for it. Don't harp on it. Just ask for it. No condemnation. Just allow the Lord to minister to and through you. And you may be in your car just singing praises to God and here he comes. And there it is, and you, and you feel it bubble up. Just let it, let it come out. Don't worry if it's not right this second, or today, or this week. You just ask the Lord. Keep it before Him. Oh, Lord, I want to build myself up. I want to pray in the Holy Spirit. I want to be used by you. Work in me. Give me these words. Give me these perfect prayers. Go back to your notes. Watch this again on YouTube just be encouraged no condemnation do not beat yourself up come on say I will not beat myself up amen alright and for all these things everyone in this room has heard the teaching of the Lord today who believes it in the name of Jesus we all say amen, amen.